Hey, it's Emilio. Ultra portable laptops are more popular than ever. So in 2020, is the MacBook Air, the device that started it all, still the best? Let's get right into it. Apple surprised us all in 2008 with a laptop that was super thin, super light, and didn't compromise on screen, battery, keyboard, trackpad, and performance. It was cutting edge and showed us a future without a DVD drive. Fast forward to today. We have an updated MacBook Air. It's fallen behind in some areas, but it's still a great laptop, albeit with some shortcomings. The screen is a 400 nit display. It's 13.3 inches, has a resolution of 2560 by 1600, which is a 16 by 10 aspect ratio. So compared to a normal laptop screen, gives you an extra little bit of height to work with. Now, it is not bright enough to use outdoors comfortably, but it still gets the job done and overall is pretty good. I really hope the competition listens and realizes 1080p is not enough of a resolution and 4K is definitely too much for a 13.3 inch screen. Apple has gotten this just right. The speakers in this machine are louder than in most PC laptops. It's, I think, Apple's competitive edge in general. They make some great portable machines that have sound that you just wouldn't believe coming out of them. And the competition has caught up in some ways, but in many ways, this remains one of their best competitive advantages. The speakers support Dolby Atmos sound, and I don't know if you saw my last video, but it works really well on the Mac. When you're listening or watching content that has Dolby Atmos, it does give you that illusion of a surround sound effect that isn't cheesy or cheap. It works really well. What's good is lightning there behind you? Six. Just spotted an old friend who works for the CIA. It just got a little more complicated. Now onto peripherals. You have two Thunderbolt 3 USB-C ports on the left side. I do wish they came on either side, but understandable. Uh, at least you do get two full powered ports. And the machine comes with a 30 watt power adapter, so it does you know, use very little energy. If you want to hook up peripherals, this thing has all the options available to you. I know some people, like I said before, don't like USB-C ports, but I think they're not only the future, but they give you such a possibility to expand with other options like hard disks, external network attached storage, Ethernet ports, Thunderbolt 3 accessories like eGPUs, displays, etc. And a lot of the Thunderbolt 3 peripherals are daisy chainable so you can hook up just one cable and from each of those devices continue to, to chain them along and have just one, a one cable setup. It's a lot easier. If you're a student or professional, and need to hook up stuff to your laptop, USB-C is going to be the way to go going forward. And on to performance. The goal for me is to have a thin and light laptop that packs a lot of power. Now, I have to be honest here, the MacBook Air does fall short for certain tasks. And let me explain. For a student or business professional that's just going to browse the internet, check emails, write documents, create PowerPoint presentations, listen to music, watch movies, do those kind of non performance tasks, this will do just fine. But when you start to push it a little bit, it will slow down a lot. <laughs> that just gotta be honest here. I had Google Chrome open with just one tab, no other apps open, trying to play a 4K video, but this slowed to a halt. You can see on screen now, it just could not play the 4K video for the life of it. And part of it might be due to the codec. I tried editing a 4K HEVC uh, video on Final Cut Pro and it just would not cooperate with me. I tried to close the app and the app froze up and I had to force quit it. So clearly if you're going to be doing stuff like that, this is not the machine for you. But for everyday tasks, I think this laptop works really well. I did also try playing a AAA game, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, on the absolute lowest settings possible uh, at 720p resolution and I was getting like 22 frames a second. Jonah, I made it. I'm on my way in. Almost there. Sorry I didn't wait. Be careful. Um, it was a very poor experience, to say the least. Now the reasoning behind this could be for several reasons, but 
The consensus around the internet is that Apple did not include a heat pipe attached to the CPU. So when the fan is spinning, it's just blowing air around the machine and not actually taking heat directly from the CPU and expelling it from the computer. Uh, it's sort of like not having a radiator in your car. You might be able to run it on a cold day and uh, you know drive slow, but the moment that you need to get somewhere quick, you won't go very far. Now, I was experiencing you know, a lot of heat coming from the computer and slow performance only when I was running those professional apps and trying to do things that were beyond a traditional user. Uh, but when I was using Safari and having other apps open, it flew by. I had no performance problems at all. I kind of wish Apple threw us a bone and included a really good cooling solution in this, or just one that was able to dissipate the heat of an Intel processor. Um, so I don't know who's to blame here, but overall, uh, not amazing. Also, don't use Google Chrome if you're gonna get this computer. It's slower, it runs a lot hotter, it's just overall not a good experience. Get Safari and that pretty much will be perfect for you the whole way. Now the fans in this computer try to stay off whenever possible, uh, but that can lead to the computer running warm and slow. And also, running your computer at high temperatures for a long time can do things like degrade the battery quicker. It can cause warping of the motherboard and cause internal components to fail more quickly than if it was properly cooled. So this is just something to keep in mind. Um, I'll link to an app that lets you manually set your fan speeds. Uh, there's even a pro version which lets you set some more advanced features. Of course, if you're just gonna be using this laptop just regularly, then I don't think this should be too much of an issue. Now, the MacBook Air is known for its great battery life. Uh, I managed to get between eight and nine hours of normal use, browsing the web, watching Netflix, just doing everyday stuff. And for me, anything more than seven hours works just fine. And I keep the brightness set to the max. At a starting price of $9.99, this is not exactly a bargain. As configured, this machine is $12.99 before any discounts or anything like that. Similar Windows laptops run at similar prices, especially when you consider the build quality the battery life, the screen, the trackpad, and the keyboard. Uh, so overall for me, it's not an amazing price, but it is a good enough price for what you're getting for it. Mac OS. If you're looking at this computer, chances are you're already using Mac OS or are looking to possibly switch to it. For me, Mac OS does several things a lot better than Windows. Uh, it tends to have better battery life, run more fluidly. It feels more polished. I like the gestures that you can use and they're a lot more consistent. The app integration between an iPhone, an iPad, a watch, and a Mac. You can unlock your computer using your watch and authenticate whenever you have to enter your password also by using your watch. You can send iMessages, get FaceTimes, have a universal clipboard between your devices, easily create a hotspot from your phone. A lot of stuff that macOS does that is just very finely integrated into the Apple ecosystem. So if you already have an iPhone, then chances are macOS is a great option for you. Environmental considerations. This is the only Mac laptop that comes with a 100% recycled aluminum chassis. It's made from fine aluminum shavings. Uh, that have been created into a new alloy and overall feels very rigid and looks amazing. It's like sort of a gold color on this one and I think the gold is really nice. And I wish the pros came in other colors besides gray and silver. The Air maintains its EPA gold standard which has to do with power consumption and if you run this thing every day, five hours a day for the entire year, you're only spending eight dollars on electricity if you live in the US and pay you know, average rates. It's great on power consumption. Now, is this worth it? If you're looking for a laptop that's well-rounded, can get most things done with ease, and run you know, most of the everyday apps that you use, then this computer is for you. Now, if you plan on running high-performance, intensive applications, editing a video, creating Photoshop projects, running virtual machines, coding, working on 3D stuff, it's not going to be a great experience if you get this machine. And you should opt for something like the MacBook Pro 13 or 16 inch. Uh, I know I made a video a couple weeks ago about not getting the base 13 inch Pro, but after having spent some time with this computer, I don't think that I agree with myself. And I think even the 13 inch base Pro could work for some people just because of the better cooling solution, even though it has arguably a worse processor, worse graphics, etc. Conclusions. Now more than ever, I feel like Apple is sending us a message, and that is 
all of those technological advancements like amazing cameras and crazy high performance in a tiny thin device are all going to come from iPad, iPhone, Apple Watch, who knows. Either that or Intel is increasingly holding back portable computers. This may be the new and shiny 10th gen 10 nanometer Intel processor we've all been waiting for for the last three to four years, but it's quite a bit behind what AMD is currently offering. And I can't help but wonder what a Apple laptop would look like with an AMD processor in it. And I'm sure a lot of the tech people on the internet are wondering the exact same thing. When I see devices like this and they're not able to perform at a very high level, I think AMD would have been a better choice for this computer personally. Well, that's all for this video. Let me know if you liked it. Uh, leave some comments down below. Don't forget to subscribe, all that great stuff. Let me know what you want to see in future videos. I have some great stuff coming up. I will see you next week, so stay tuned for that. And in the meantime, let's uh, chat down in the comments. Peace out.